What's up, everybody? Glad to be bringing you yet another G.I. Joe HasLab review. I guess I can't really, I've never brought you one before. This is the first one I'm bringing you. What am I talking about? Of course, I'm talking about the Sky Striker. The Eagle has landed. My five Sky Strikers just got dropped off at the front door by FedEx a few minutes ago, and I've got it here right in front of me. I, I can't even sit down. I'm that excited. So we're going to get into this thing. We're going to check out how it got shipped to me. We're going to look at the boxes inside afterwards. We're going to tear it apart. We're going to talk about it. We're going to open everything. Everything's getting open. No, no prisoners. Tearing everything off the card, snapping pieces together, putting figures in cockpits. I'm ready. You're ready. Let's talk about it. And so here it is. Here is the uh, one of the five boxes I received in the mail from FedEx today. Um, yeah, I have to actually hold the camera right now, so I apologize if it's a little shaky. I'm actually holding the camera stand. But yeah, so you'll notice it comes shipped directly from Hasbro in its uh, typical box that we see other figures ship in with the toys, SIOC. And we have action figures, F41451 piece, GIJ. HasLab 3.75 inch Sky Striker GI Joe. Gross weight 12.28 pounds. Net weight 10.16 pounds. So yeah, made in Vietnam. This thing's cool. It looks very solid. Uh, but yeah, I think we want to probably open it up and see what's inside. So I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do this. So give me just a minute to open it up and then we'll come right back and we'll, we'll see what the inside looks like. So inside the box is another box. And inside that box is the Sky Striker box, which has these cute little handles. Look at that, to help pull the figure actually out, or the box actually out. But there's what we're looking for, ladies and gentlemen. The Sky Striker. Combat Jet Sky Striker XPF 14F. Yeah, they did a very good job of uh, boxing this in here. So, give me just another minute to pull some things apart, get this guy out. See, I have to take, this is a very nice, uh, very heavy. Not super heavy, but enough to protect it. So yeah, let me get the rest of this out and we'll talk about it more. Sorry, I figured I would give you a quick showcase of just what's underneath the Sky Striker box. So I did, just before we get into that, the, the handles, actually underneath the handles, underneath the Sky Striker box itself are the stickers for the Sky Striker. So those are off to the side. But underneath you get all the accessories and of course you get the actual uh, seven figures that come with the HasLab set. And they've put these very nice uh, blockers in here to keep your cards nice and straight. And then over here you have the stand that the Sky Striker can set on. All your additional accessories, uh, including your little gas up tanks. And I'm assuming these are all the missiles and plumes. So yeah, I'm going to dig this all out, get it all straightened out, set down, and we'll start going through it. Stay tuned. Okay, here we go. This is the Combat Jet Sky Striker. This is what we've all been waiting for. And it looks fantastic. This box is feels like something you would have picked up off the shelves back in the 80s and 90s. It is just perfect. It's got a nice heftiness to it. Um, of course, it's got this wonderful art that has been redesigned in part to add the names, both pilots, the additional looks of the updated uh, F-14 Tomcat. And wow, it's just, it's fantastic. Um, of course, I've got my ultra-wide lens going on right now because this thing's so darn big. It'll barely fit on here. So, of course, they want to see the top. And it's got that classic look. I'm just going to move my camera a little bit so you can see it. You know, missiles and three-bomb accessories. Parachutes attach and store inside of removable ejection seats just like the original but these are hopefully going to be a lot better. Doors open and close as landing gear is lowered and raised. And of course, the wings sweep in and out. Highly detailed aerodynamic style, 23 inch wingspan. And of course, if we spin it around, you get that very classic artwork, reminiscent from days gone past. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like a little kid right now. This is so exciting. Um, just the classic black and white and red that they would do these in for the original figures back in the 80s, early 90s. And of course, you've got your figures that are included. Includes figures Ace and Failsafe, new to the line Failsafe. So there's a lot of people looking forward to that. And uh, Modern Army Action Weapon, the G.I. Joe Mobile Strike Force Sky Striker XP-14F is part of the G.I. Joe team's collection of vehicles and figures 
Collect them all. Use it to help G.I. Joe protect democracy from the evil enemy of Cobra Command. And wow, it's just a, it's just a fantastic box. One thing, like I mentioned earlier, was that the before I open it, that the the decals you get a lot of them, a lot of decals you get. Whoops, stuff falling out. You get Cobra. So if you want to have a Cobra pilot, wow, stuff just falling out left and right. Um, these are just hilarious. Anytime, baby. And then uh, different stickers for your the, the wings. That's so cool. Sorry, I'm just I'm just looking at all the stickers that are gonna drive me crazy. Um, this sticker set is really cool. This is similar to what came with the modern era Sky Strikers, so you can make it flints or snake eyes or I'm assuming that's shipwreck since it's a dolphin. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure on that one either. Somebody tell me what that is. And then of course they've got the sticker. They've got stickers for Northrop Grumman, uh, Grumman who actually designed the fighter pilot. Or the the plane itself, and then you've got your your actual Tomcat. That's so cool. So on top of all that, you also have, and I want to make sure you guys see this, the actual blueprint and instructions on how to put this thing together. So I think we're all familiar, or should be familiar. There's your sticker sheet instructions. Oh wait, there we go. We actually have two. So that's super cool. And then here's the utility vehicles on the other side. But yeah, so you get your blueprints, you get your sticker sheets. Uh, here's the other sticker sheet for the very classic look. And then you get your, of course, your multi-language warnings. So enough of that. I'm going to get this opened up and we're going to start putting this guy together. Probably won't put any stickers on it today, but at least we can get it out of the box and put it together see what this how this stacks up. Uh, I don't have a vintage or a modern area sky striker anymore, but I've had enough of them in my time. I'll probably be able to remember how well this stacks up to those. So let's get this bad boy open. Okay. Here we have it. The sky striker GI Joe has lab. And wow, this thing is magnificent. And I don't think that can be overstated enough. Um, for the folks that are out there, if you're one of those folks, I'm going to have to correct you and say, this is not like your vintage Sky Striker. This is not like a modern era. This is not a replica of that or something made off the exact same mold. This is 100% new tooling. Everything about this thing is, is better. Maybe not necessarily bigger, but definitely better. Um, as you might notice, uh, it comes out of the package. I had to, I went ahead and assembled the wings. As a matter of fact, you can see I messed up right there and didn't clip that in all the way. But one of the nice things about this is, as I, I'll take this off camera just long enough to pop it. You can hear it squeaking and you just probably heard it click. This, this thing is solid. It is not going to necessarily, if you drop it, I don't think it's going to shatter. Unlike a 40 year old Sky Striker. Maybe not a modern era, it'd probably survive it too. But this thing is solid. It has a very nice white, off-white, gray uh, gleam to it. Makes it very shiny, very pretty. You also get options for uh, tail fins. I went with the with the white, the off-white. You can certainly do the black ones if you want to be more like a classic Sky Striker. Um, and then it just comes with a number of accessories that I haven't even gotten to yet. But... As you can see, I have the landing gear down with the wings back. So that's the big thing that they fixed on this. And another reason why this shows that it's a newly sculpted vehicle, because landing gear on the originals and the modern eras, always, when you pulled this, the landing gear came out with the wings. Now, you can keep the landing gear down regardless and it's just super cool because they've actually if i set this over here and show you you've got this air brake and it's actually movable but underneath the tow catch the tow hook catch is actually the second for the wheels 
That's awesome. That's, that's amazing. So now you have a Sky Striker that can keep its wings back while in a position of landing or just setting in general. Of course, they've added extra things. This is, they went to, uh, I forget their names, and Northam Grum, Grumman, Northup Gum, Grumman, I can never say it. Anyway, they went to them, got permission to use their likeness, built the actual thing closer to an F-14 Tomcat, which also includes the add-on of the radar on the front. They call it a removable nose. Let me see what they actually call it. I'm looking at the box right now because it, it, removable chin pod is what they call it. But this is just what you use for your radar for missile guidance and whatnot. I assume. If there's any uh, Air Force people or Navy on the, on the uh, video, drop me a comment down below. So, of course, there's all sorts of neat things. Of course, one of the big things is, as I drop my landing gear back because I pressed too hard on it, I'm just going to take the landing gear down, make it easier to see. Everything in here is so firm. Like, it's firm, but it's flexible at the same time. Wow, I am doing a great job on this. Well, maybe I'm not going to show it to you because these panels are a lot tighter than on the modern era or the original Stry Stry Sky Striker. I was hoping I'd just be able to pull this off and show you the inner workings, but maybe I will have to leave that for a later. There we go. Try not to shake everything, but... So if you look here... They've actually brought it up so you can see different parts. This is rays versus the dark gray below. So very cool, very cool. And if you're curious, it's, it's just tabbed in. So now you just tab it down. Well, I assume you just tabbed it down. I'm so afraid I'm gonna break something with a toy I've had less than 30 minutes that I'm gonna snap a tab off. So let's look at this here. Maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. Try to keep it flush and slide it over. Ah, uh, Mark, come on, bud. Not a smart man, but I do know what love is. if I push this down, I'm gonna, gonna snap that tab because they're kind of an L shape, so I thought I could just tab it back in, but it feels like when I'm doing that, that I'm gonna snap it. And I would be very sad to break this already. So, you know what? We're gonna come back to that. We'll do it off screen. Some of the other noteworthy features, actually, I kind of like the landing gear down because it sets it up a little higher. So other things of note is you have a port right here for, oh, I should not have clipped my nails today. If I can get it out, this is where you can fuel the Sky Striker. And I was gonna love to show it. Well, okay, so maybe, maybe, I don't know if I'm not locking that all the way or what, but I will say it does seem like the back wheels seem to fold up just a little bit. So let me, let me go back out to here, lock this back in. So, like I said, the wheels, maybe they're, maybe they're just a little loose or maybe I'm pushing too much on the, on the backside of the plane. But we have here, this is a actual opening for the fuel tank. And here's the fuel tank in case it's just, it's just hollow plastic, but it's got this really cool extending you can see it right now and you can tighten it back up but it's supposed to go right in there unfortunately I can't seem to get it off um, that being said we've got let's go back and look under the underside again like I said you got all the connections for your missiles uh, one of the things I didn't show earlier was that you can take out the afterburner engines, which 
which I'm going to have to take off screen for a moment. There we go. Got one pulled out. So, and then it's got some very nice details to it. Of course, there's the other end. So, when it, and it actually has a little tab on it right here. So when you push it in to the bay where the engine goes, this tab locks it in place. But it's very cool to have this just sitting out because you can take this other cart that it comes with and you can, well, I thought you could maybe set them on there, but there's actually plugs for what looks like to be the missiles maybe. Because I feel like you could still set it on there and make like, you know, having repairs done to it. I think that would be pretty cool. So... But yeah, whenever you go back to uh, the back side of the engine, I'll try to show that to you right now. There's just a, you can see, I'm, I'm sorry for shoddy camera, camera work, but you just line up the tabs and it just pushes right in. And it snaps in place. So perfect. Again, you can see the, the tow hook off the end of the plane. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, yeah, go ahead and close that down. The other big part of this is the stand, of course. And you can see how the stand has these three connectors. The plane has its three connectors. We'll go ahead and put it on the stand. That might make everybody's life a little easier. Just trying to see how this goes on here. Again, I'm watching the camera instead of actually using my eyeballs. Maybe it goes this, let's see, these three are back, so it'd be this way. And I apologize for getting way out of frame. I just don't have enough room. That's all there is to it. But, there we go. So, you can pivot it, you can really bank this thing, you can make it go straight up, which is very impressive if you look, it's, it's not touching the table. But man, that is a straight, that's a, that's a straight up flight right there. So, and of course, you can take it any position in between. So yeah, I, I kind of like that. I mean, that's a, that's pretty cool. So like I said, I, I'm going to work on getting that piece back in there. Um, accessories out the wazoo. I'll probably actually come back here in a minute with this guy fully loaded up and we'll talk about the accessories a little bit more, but I've got, I've got a absolute mess around me at the moment. So stay tuned and we'll go into it a little deeper. Okay. I'm back just to show you a couple more things. I was able to get the, uh, the tab piece back on or which is this one it does. It slides in like an L if you're looking at this one, two tabs there, one there, you, you slide it in like an L and then just push it so it kind of cups in and it'll make a loud snap but I can say I can confirm it does not break <laughs> so again very flexible but very sturdy material used in this uh, Sky Striker when it was built uh, just wanted to show you guys real quick so I put the, the the seats in the plane and they just they're just on a peg so here's the actual seats they both look the same so you've got your peg for your uh, back of your figure and the back has some very intricate designs, control panels. That's really cool. And then up in there is your actual parachute. And then here's the peg that actually just puts it down in there. So you just put it down in the Sky Striker like so. He said. And there you go. Your figure's in there. I might actually I feel like I have it up too far, but I don't. It'll be interesting to see how tight that is for the for the figures because it looks like there's plenty of room for the secondary figure. But uh, another thing that was interesting, I'm gonna start getting into the accessories now. So that 
clamps down very nice. So there it is. I've got it loaded up with missiles. I'll try to tip it back and show you kind of what I did. Man, I am just going to have to pull this back. See, I've already started knocking the missiles loose because I'm moving them all around. So you can look into my lovely closet. So we get a lot of accessories, and I have them all just strewn about right here. But uh, as far as the Sky Striker goes, you can you can load up load this thing up with a lot of missiles. There are two different uh, types of plastic pegs that you can put on. One is more of just having the original single missile, or you can put the one I put on, which allows you to carry uh, two missiles. Hopefully, you can see that. So I went with that, but it does come with both of those. So I'm gonna move those out of the way since we've discussed those. And I'm gonna move this back here. I'm gonna slide our Sky Striker back into view and just kind of bring over some stuff to talk about while we look at it. So of course we've got the Sky Striker and it comes with a whole bunch of plumes. So we've got, I'm not even sure what half of these are to be honest but it looks like you can plug the missiles into one side maybe and then the other end hooks off the plane maybe? I don't know. I know these are for the engines and they are super cool. So, like I said, you can probably see me doing it off screen right now. You can literally put the plumes into the engine and I'm not going to push it in, but you can see how that goes in. So you get two afterburn plumes. Uh, you get a ton of extra missiles. So I will say I did get my two extra sidewinders I would have put on, but you know, one of these is not like the other. One's nice and straight. One, yeah, we'll leave the jokes at home. So I was a little disappointed that a little bit of hot water would bend that back in place. Of course you get two extra larger size missiles as well. Again, already tampoed, so you don't have to worry about stickers. You get your fuel reserve, which I cannot put on because it's on the stand currently. I mentioned it earlier, you can use the, uh, the black fins and pop them in and out as you choose. Um, two more missiles. Actually, I'm not sure these are missiles. These might be more fuel tanks. I don't know. Drop me a comment. Are these fuel tanks or, or bombs? Like, are they the top bombs that just dead drop, or are they actually small fuel tanks? Um, more plumes. These are more of a longer one to signify a shorter missile or smaller missile going faster. And then you've got these super little ones that actually go underneath the, uh, the seats. So if you're doing the ejector motion, you could actually use those. And of course, you get two of those. And then uh, finally, you've got some other varying sizes of plumes. Some wider, some smaller, and then the ones in between. So that's kind of your three different types of plumes you get. Very cool, and you get a match for each of them. And then uh, the, the question mark I have really is, uh, I don't know why we got an extra canopy. What am I... What am I not understanding here? What what part of my brain is not working? It looks it looks identical to me. Now, if I open this one, I mean, you guys tell me, do you see any difference? They they look identical. I don't see a difference between the two. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. Snap that back down in place. So there you go, if I pull back a little bit. Oh, I didn't go over these a little in a little more detail. So we have, I mentioned it earlier, the, the, the truck, uh, the tanker. And of course, like I mentioned, it does plug into this area which comes apart. And you just hook it up in. So that's pretty cool, nothing too special. It is kind of neat to have this little uh, feature where you can wind it back in. <laughs> So that was fun. That was a fun little thing. It's very light, very kind of feels cheap, to be honest. But I mean, it's fine. It is what it is, right? And then you get uh, 
this cart, which is pretty cool because you can put missiles on it or tank. I, I don't know what, I guess you put anything that's got a, a rack. So you could put in the missiles. You know, you're hauling them to the plane. Now, one thing I found when I was going through it was there's actually includes a ladder that was separate. So you can use the ladder. I'll show you real quick. You can actually use this ladder to attach to the uh, to the can to the actual uh, Sky Striker canopy. And I thought this adjusted. Maybe it doesn't. No, it has to. Can't be that small. But the ladder is meant to go on the canopy, so you can actually, you know, like a true pilot getting in would use this and. I guess I'm not smart enough to figure this out. Maybe it is just one piece. Maybe it's not meant to actually connect to there. Because it, no, it is. It is. It's got to be, right? There's probably some hidden thing that comes out that I'm not aware of. Well, you know what? I actually have the uh, instructions right here, but I'll look at that. But yeah, you can also just clip it right onto here. And you've got it. So you can just haul it around. That's how they show it in the picture. And then this whole thing comes off. Revealing the engine. And they give you a little engine plate cover. To put over it. So that's kind of cool. And that, of course, you can move that around. So that's neat. Um, so yeah, let me see what the instructions say about this whole ladder gimmick. Because I thought the ladder actually did go on the side of the plane. But now I'm not seeing anything about that ladder other than it connects to the side of the uh, bomb carrier. So, sorry, I had to move that. I'm just checking it out, trying to see if there's anything in here that says anything about the where the ladder connects. It doesn't seem like it's showing you how the blast effects work and the, everything that comes apart, how to get the figures in. There's the... Oh, so the blast effect. This is the one you use for the... Interesting. Hmm. Wouldn't have thought that. I thought it would have been those little tiny ones. Maybe the little tiny ones is for gunfire. Or are for gunfire. There's those tabs you can switch in and out. Oh, you can put the blast effects on the front. Let's just do that real quick. So I see where that goes. I spy with my little eye. Pull this back. Tip this up. And there you go. You've got your blast effect. So, pretty cool. Of course, the other thing is, is that you also can store missiles and whatnot on the plane itself. So, you can see where we have the tabs to put the missiles. Or you can just be like me and just chuck everything in the bottom and say that's where it's going. <laughs> and, it's, and it's fairly deep. You can see I'm... These things are pretty long, and I'm just throwing them right in there. I mean, it's not too hard to get most of the stuff in there. Might have to fidget them around a little bit. But like I said, you can get most of the stuff in there on the bottom shelf. And then, of course, you can put your missiles on the outside or however you see fit. If you don't want to display it with the missiles, you certainly don't have to. But as you can see, we can put those right on there. It looks very, very good. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this overall so far. Uh, very cool. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video momentarily so that I can get everything cleaned up, see what my son's screaming about in the background, and uh, we'll return shortly. Okay, so we are back, and here we are. All seven figures that come with the Sky Striker. Uh, the reason there are seven figures, if you do not recall, is that there was actually unlockables. The first two figures were going to be Ace and Failsafe. And then the unlocks were Pilot, Scarlet, Night Force, Ripcord, and the Cobra Command team, so to speak, of Mickey Mouse, Cobra Commander, Cobra Ground Crew, and Cobra Trooper. So, this is what you got in the package. Now, first impressions, wonderful figures, look great, 
Uh, obviously, we're going to open each one of these. So I'll actually try to timestamp in the video each figure opening. So if you don't want, if you want to skip over one, that's great. If you want to watch them all, that's great too. Unfortunately, with mine, when I opened mine up, I did have some slight. Uh, maybe it wasn't this one. It was. Uh, there's some slight veining in the card right through here. It's hard to see on this one, but there's a couple other ones. Notably, uh, my favorite one, uh, my favorite Joe. Uh, ripcord it's got some very noticeable veining right there so that's unfortunate they do come well protected um if i was to pull out basically they they're sitting in the box and they have this in it so that each figure is locked in place or each so you can see they have them stacked on each other but they had they were in like this and then they had a uh, tissue paper over top each card art to keep it from being scratched so that's really good and whatnot, but still there are some that have veining. Uh, Night Force Ripcord Scarlet also has it right here. The Cobra ones were all okay. They, they didn't have any issues, but unfortunately the Joe side of the house seemed to have minor issues. But just to, to, to start with just one, just to talk about all the cards, they are very solid, a thicker material that we've been seeing with the retro the more recent retro figures like cobra commander in the duke two pack it's a it's a firmer card now mine is a little bent so that's unfortunate but at least they did them unpunched so that's very cool they have all the art so that's really good they have i think what's gonna make a lot of people happy the single language file card no upc since these are not sold individually and of course they have the HasLab logo there I think that says parents, gijoe.com. So I guess if you want your parents to go, I don't know. Fictional name, G.I. Joe and Hasbro related trademarks and logos, Hasbro 2023. And yeah, I mean, this this feels like a, this feels like something you would have got off the shelf in the 80s or early 90s. And it's fantastic. I love the art on all of them. But these are toys, and these toys are not meant to be... Uh, we are not leaving them in the package. I'm going to open each one of them up. They're for my personal collection. I'm a loose... Uh, I display my figures loose. So we're going to just go down the line. And uh, like I said, we're going to go through one at a time. I'll timestamp them in the video. So if you just want to walk, look at your favorite ones, that's perfectly fine. Otherwise, I'm getting these guys and gal off, the, uh, off their cards, out of their plastic prisons, and we're going to see what it's all about. So let's do it. All right, first up, Ace. Obviously, if you had a Sky Striker, you had Ace when you were a kid. I don't remember having a Sky Striker with Ace. I always had Ace Sky Striker, but I didn't have the figure. I got some of my stuff secondhand, so makes sense. Um, but yeah, they, they basically made him identical to what he looked like originally. Uh, card art, once again, we just talked about it, but we'll talk about it again. New artwork. Everyone has new artwork except for Night, uh, Night Force Ripcord. He is a recolor of, a, of the existing art. This is all new otherwise. I don't know who did the art, but this looks fantastic. Uh, code name, Brad Ace Armbruster. And of course, we have his file card on the back. Primary military speciality, fixed wing pilot, single and multiple engine. Second military speciality, intelligence operations. From Providence, Rhode Island, of course, home of Hasbro. You got your cross cell up here and uh, your quick little couple of liners uh, to give you that uh, character building. So, like I said, let's just get him off the card. Let's see what it's all about. I can feel some people watching this just cringing that I'm doing this. Why, why, why? It's okay. I've got more. So, peeling it right off. Very, very stuck on there. Matter of fact, it's, it's separating away from the paper. So... There we go. Ta-da! Look at that. It looks just like, like I was, you know, six years old again, tearing into these guys. I veined it and everything. So, get him out of his plastic prison. Oh, it's one piece. Interesting. So, as you can see, tie, tab together. We're going to pull out his helmet accessory. Pull out his pistol. And finally, the figure himself. All right, so there we go. We have Ace. 
Not seeing any major issues yet with the figure. Uh, looks like they didn't clamp that down all the way. Trying to get the focus. Focus on the arm, please. There you go. So yeah, I'll, you know, I'm not going to be super disappointed if there's some minor, in, you know, inconsistencies, but, you know, 90 degree turn in the leg, other leg, 90 degrees, full range of motion. It keeps wanting to focus on his face. There we go. So yeah, very cool. Tight O-ring. And of course, like I said, he comes with his helmet. It fits on there very well, very tight. Very tight. There we go. Just got a rocket from the back to the front and it comes right off. And then put it right back on there. And of course, he has his sidearm, which we can pop right into his hand. And there we go. Gonna go zoom in on him real quick. Just so you can see him standing up. And yeah. He's got a little, it feels like he kind of wants to pop forward a little bit like that because that O-ring's so tight. Yeah, see? Duke. That O-ring is tight. Tight, but not going to break. So yeah, there is our review of Ace. Very cool. I will, later on, at the end of the video, I'll put Ace and Failsafe in the Sky Striker so you can see what it looks like. So with that, we will move on to our next G.I. Joe. Okay, moving on to Radar Intercept Officer Codename Failsafe. New figure to the line. Never previously, uh, never released as an O-ring or a modern air figure. This is the first time. So really, if you didn't get a HasLab Sky Striker, at least as of right now, 2023, January 29th, you're not getting him unless you had it because this is a completely unique first-time figure in the line. O-ring, no less. Now, that's not to say they might not re-release him or they might release him as a classified later, but he was created exclusively for the HasLab. So, same thing. We've got the figure on the uh, cardboard stock, plastic bubble, radar intercept officer, codename failsafe, beautiful artwork done, and the figure itself. Wonderful. On the back, we have that file card again. We have file name, Wayne Ruthel. Primary military speciality, fixed wing pilot, single and multiple engine. Secondary military specialty, flight instructor from Bethpage, New York. Bethpage, New York. And uh, it's wonderful. It's so much fun to have unique characters, new characters to the line. But if you're like me, you want to dig in and play with your toys. Because that's what we are. Grown men and women living out our lives like we were back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Now, I will say I also like that, the, that I like, we mentioned it in the Ace video, but I like that they did this. And everything's in there so well. It's not tape, but that, it's not going anywhere. So, there we go. Pop fail safe out. And pop the accessories out. They are in there. Oops. That gun is really in there. Really in there. So while we're doing that, we'll we'll angle down so we can look at failsafe. So of course, failsafe, I believe, is just a re complete uh, redo of ripcord. Sorry, I'm just admiring it. I should probably be talking about it. I have got some... There we go. So that's a little bit disappointing. Got some... Got some color paint rub right there from some green. Not a big deal. And of course we've got 
another tight O-ring. But yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that paint's got gotten rubbed like that. Face looks great. Side to side. Looks wonderful otherwise. I do not know why this thing is not focusing and it is driving me bonkers. I do not, please focus where I'm typing. Oh, okay, there, great. You know what I just realized? They do not come with uh, stands. Now that, my friends, I do find a little bit annoying. Why would you not include stands with your figures? That, that's a big miss. I'm sorry, that is a huge miss. They should, Hasbro should know better. But, uh, so I got the helmet out. The helmet got some, some massive warp going on here. Man, this camera is having a heck of a time focusing. Focus camera. Oh, come on. Sorry, folks. New camera. Well, new phone. Not exactly wanting to play with my application very well. As I bring it in, it doesn't want to focus. Focus camera. There we go. So there's the helmet. It's a very soft material, so I don't think it's going to have any problems sitting on his head. There you go. As you can see, perfect. There we go. He does have a little bit of paint on the neck. There's a little speck, but not near as bad as that hand. That hand's disappointing me a lot. And yeah, so he also comes with the pistol, same pistol Ace came with. So I'm going to put this in his left hand. For some reason, all my figures are going to be left-handed today, I guess. Probably because I'm right-handed and I'm using my right hand to put it in. So there. So we have failsafe with his gun that I just promptly knocked out of his hand. Elbows twist just fine. Uh, let's make sure knees good. Knees good. Again, there's that. Uh, yeah, just a, I'm just disappointed that they don't come with stands. I wish I would have realized that with Ace, but I don't know. Did they think it was going to be in the... Uh, you're going to have them just in the Sky Striker? Maybe. Man, I tell you what. My camera is not... My phone is not focusing today. There we go. So there's Failsafe. Bring in Ace so you can see him. So there's your pilots of the Sky Striker. Very cool. Like I said, we're kind of, I'm, I'm seeing some quality control issues that for me personally, I'm not too bent out of shape for. But I mean, the pain on the hand, the elbow on Ace, no stands. Ugh, that's. I'm more bothered by the failsafe one because I can go get an ace figure. They're not that hard to find online or on Facebook Marketplace. But failsafe, I mean, that's just... If I want a better failsafe, I have to open another box and open another figure, a carded figure. So uh, we'll keep going. We're going to see how this goes moving on. Uh, we'll go on to the next Joe, which will be uh, Scarlet in her uh, fighter pilot outfit. So moving on. Sorry, folks, had to jump back in here. Upon closer inspection, I would like to apologize and amend what I said earlier. The head on Failsafe is a new sculpt. That head is completely new. I thought it was just a repainted ripcord. It is not. Same for the chest. The, uh, the actual torso piece is a new piece, as far as I'm aware. There, it is not shared with any of the other figures. I thought that it was, I thought this figure was more of a repaint of ripcord than what it actually was. So, I stand corrected. That is a new body from at least the torso up. Torso and neck are definitely new um, as far as modern day O-ring figures is concerned. So just wanted to jump back in real quick before we moved on to say I apologize. I did realize that after the fact. And uh, he's just not wanting to stand up. Hasbro, this is why we need stands. This is why we need stands. Okay, moving on to Scarlet. Okay, we have Scarlet in her flight suit. And just one of the things you immediately notice is the new artwork uh, of Scarlet and her classic head sculpt having a little bit darker 
uh, hair than I remember on the original. Uh, basically, she's the ace body, identical to the ace body with a scarlet head and her crossbow and the same helmet. Interesting that they show her with a pistol on here, but she has the crossbow as the actual accessory. So that's that's interesting, but yeah. So on the back, we have Scarlet's file card, file name Shauna O'Hara, primary military speciality intelligence, secondary, uh, secondary military speciality classified from Atlanta, Georgia. So I think, you know, we've kind of gone through these pretty quick. Let's go ahead and open her up, get her off of this card. And that one came off very easily. So take that off to the side, pull Scarlet out, pop the helmet out. There we go. Pop Scarlet out, crossbow, and off to the side. So first things first, we have Scarlet. And like I said, not really, I mean, it's, it's again, it's just Ace's body in a different paint job. So just the dark blue, the light blue with the white gloves, some white streaks right here to, to break it up a little bit on Ace. I believe those are, yeah, those are gray. And then you've got the, the Scarlet head, which is exactly the Scarlet head we are uh, used to. And yeah, it's a, uh, it is what it is. Nothing too special. Like it's kind of it's more brown than red, so I'm kind of wondering why they did that. But yeah, so we've got the helmet, which of course is right here, and same thing, snaps right on, no issues there. And then finally we have her. Hello, dear. You know, I I had read something. Let me set put Scarlet back here for a second. I had read online, and I didn't want to believe it, or I wanted to believe it was an off chance of it being true. There is no grip for this crossbow. They made the crossbow without a grip. <sighs> Hasbro, how do you mess these things up? How, how? How do you mess them up? How do you mess something like this up? You literally have the figures... The designs, all you had to do was 3D scan an old crossbow and you would have this. Um, for those of you that are unaware, um, I don't know if they were thinking this was where she was supposed to hold it, but there should be a post. And I apologize for my camera being dumb and not... This is not the grip. I think they thought it was. Wow, that's, there's no, it should just have a regular, wow, okay, so I guess if you want Scarlet to hold this, you have to do, what, what, what did they think? Seriously. I am, I am shocked, to be honest. So I guess they think she's going to hold it like this, which is not how that works at all. Wow, okay, well. There you go. The figure's fine. Nothing wrong with the figure. Uh, I assume since it's Ace's body, it's going to be, you know, at least these are, well, these it almost has that same little gap. Not as quite as bad as Ace's. Matter of fact, let's just pull out Ace real quick and compare them. So, real quick. So she's got a little bit of gap in her right arm, and he's got, well, nope, it's identical. So I guess that's just the way they were made. Interesting. So... Back to Scarlet. Great figure outside of this. See, this is not a, <laughs> it's not a, not a hand. Wow, Hasbro, come on. Come on, guys. I mean, what, what are we doing here? Here, turn this down. What, what are we, what are we, guys? Guys, this is unacceptable. Paint smudges and, you know, some, some semi wonky arms I can handle. This is being lazy. This is lazy. Whoever did this, you're lazy. If this was subcontracted out, maybe, to another, you know, another engine, not engineer, but like another design company and not Hasbro, like, like Lenny's team that does classified, then wow. Um, yeah. 
I, I, I mean, it's not a big deal. I can get a Scarlet crossbow, but again, this is supposed to be premium, and that does that does upset me a lot. That's something that's a glaring oversight that shouldn't be. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we've got one more guy to go. We've got Night uh, Night Force with Ripcord. We'll look at him, and then we will move on to the Cobras. But right now, the, these figures are not batting near where I thought they should be for the premium price tag. But let's move on. Okay, after cracking down really hard on the Scarlet figure, I'm hoping Night Force Ripcord will redeem my my hopes on these action figures. So, Night Force Ripcord, same art as the original for the most part, just kind of cleaned up a little bit and changed to the Night Force looking color scheme. Uh, Codename Ripcord Halo Jumper. And of course he has his backpack, uh, his mask I assume is going to be in there. And uh, comes with his rifle. And on the back, of course, uh, once again, we have the Night Force logo up here for Ripcord. The rest of the figures. Looking at that beautiful file card, we have Wallace A. Weems. Primary Speciality, Airborne Infantry, Secondary Speciality Demolitions from Columbus, Ohio. So, Halo Jumper, High Altitude, Low Opening. So, let's get this guy off the, off the uh, card art. Feel shame doing this to the Night Force card. It looks so good. But it is what it is. It's a toy. I said we were opening them, and by golly, that's what we're doing. So, figure out. Uh, oops. Now, that's interesting. Look at that. So, they didn't. I had spoken earlier how I like that they attached the plastic, and on this one, they didn't. They made it separate. There's no... Uh, this is this one of the Scarlet figure. They did not do that with the... Uh, with the uh, rip cord, so of course we have his accessories in here real quick, and we'll get to those in a minute. But I do see his helmet inside there. There he is in his plastic prison. Let's get his gun out, get his rifle out without bending it too much. Ooh, that bent. And of course, get the figure out. So pull him out, and here we go. First impressions off the top. Good figure, good figure. Uh, another case of a kind of a weird... Ooh, that's nice. Now, let me see if I can get the camera to focus on that. Little Night Force logo, very nice. Um, yeah, this is just the typical ripcord body. Got this legs that bend, good O-ring. Black and dark green, just the way it should be. Uh... The good news is when you do a black figure, you don't really get much paint rub. I got some just green on the hands on it, part of his uh, belts for his jumpsuit. Uh, and yeah, his head. So I will set him right there for a moment. Quickly pull up his... Uh, slide him back a little bit. Again, none of these figures are coming with stands. That is very disappointing. Very disappointing. So of course you get his weapon. Um, is this a, an FAL? Foul, I don't know how you pronounce it. And I'm not an expert of guns by any means. I know like five. So uh, tell me what kind of gun it is because I could look it up, but I'm not going to. So yeah, he comes with his, his rifle, which of course will will snap. We'll put it in his right hand because I was putting it in everybody else's left hand. This does have a handle, thankfully, or a grip, I should say. So perfect, goes right in there. No issues there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And, of course, we get his gear. This is a very malleable plastic. It's very, very soft. So, super soft, actually. So, first we get his his, uh, his backpack gear. So, of course, if we were to put it on him, it's going to spruce him up quite a bit. So, if I'm remembering correctly, it should go as simple as this over his back. Put his arms out of the way, fold his arm down, fold his other arm down, and on the back, it's going to go behind the, oops, his gun popped out. I assume it's going to go behind the backpack. It's very, this is a very gummy feeling material, like it just does not want to cooperate at all. There is not enough... 
it's not firm enough to go through the maybe I should oh bear with me folks as you know it's kind of difficult to do this wrap my hands around a camera while also trying to feed this silly strap through like I said it's super malleable so it's it's good and bad it's just oh there we go so pull it through as you can see I've just kind of barely done it for the sake of oh I'm gonna need to, I I can't live with myself if it's not that if it's not tighter that'll just drive me absolutely insane uh let's get that as tight as we possibly can okay that's that's much better so we've got it uh okay time out folks this is just a super super annoying and again it's just i think it's just because of the i'm trying to feed it through both right now and i promise if i don't get it in the next 20 seconds i'll just probably give up on it and we'll move on but it is very very difficult oh, i think i got it yahoo once i get this on it's never coming off that's for sure there we go oh much better so i managed to pull it all the way through this time again picked a poor time to clip my nails so backpack on put his arms down looks nice kind of sets a little loose on him even now but there i think there are more you can still tighten it a little more so i will set that there so you can take a look at him we have his helmet, which is a lot harder plastic, similar to, uh, it's not as hard as, say, a vintage figure. It's, it's soft, but it's not rubbery. And then, of course, we have to put on his, his respirator, goggles, whatever you want to call it. And that is just another loop that goes around the mask, or around the helmet, rather. Interesting, very interesting indeed. So, try to give you a, a back view of what I'm doing. I know it's not very good. You're just mostly seeing my fingers trying to nudge over something on a helmet. So, oh, let's do this. Let's just take it. Since we know what it's supposed to do. Feed it through. Grab it there helmet on and then my goal is to just stretch it over the helmet and without and I just undid it wow this is this is a test in patience and I just I don't recall ripcord being this difficult to put together i mean this stuff's so so gummy that it just doesn't really want to go together like even me just trying to press this tube into his vest it just there's not enough resistance so let's let's do this let's try putting it on his head this is a dumb idea because i need to get that helmet on first because it should go around the helmet. So let's, maybe we do a thing where we don't actually put it on his face. But man, that's kind of the whole point, right? Night Force Ripcord, we want him to look, you know, blacked out, right? That's what we want. So cool, we get it through there. Man, this is very difficult. Very, very difficult. Very difficult, very frustrating. And normally I don't get this frustrated, but I think I think I'm still just kind of mad about the uh, the scarlet crossbow thing. So now every little imperfection is driving me absolutely crazy. <laughs> and this isn't even terrible. It's just me getting mad at plastic toys, which is silly. It's silly, Mark, to get mad at plastic toys. There we go. There we go. Now, finally, 
I know it's a bit difficult to see that. I will turn on my on my light here real quick so you guys can see a little better. So, I mean, this is Night Force, so it's it's the light in my room is not the best, but that is definitely a here I'll I will slide this on and hopefully not block all the cameras, which I am doing a fantastic job of, so I'll just do it over here. I'll do it up here. So, Night Force Ripcord with his rifle looking pretty solid if I do say so myself I will m move this down so that you can see a little better what he looks like like I said this figure is doing very well other than the really gummy vest and the uh, just getting the helmet and the pieces that it's in because it's so gummy makes it a little difficult but it's got great design on it I mean like right there you can see the knife if I move my camera is, this new phone is really trying to focus in on things that, so like it's cool, you can see that knife in there, at least I believe it's a knife, and I mean it looks pretty solid otherwise. So Night Force Ripcord, I'm going to give him an A+, plus. Um, maybe not an A+, plus. So let's give him probably a, a B+, plus because I mean that, that vest and stuff's really janky, or at least that rubbery, super rubbery vest is kind of hard to deal with. Um, cool box art. Don't like the fact there's still no stands either. I've got I've got some gripes, Hasbro, but there you have it for uh, for Night Force Ripcord, an excellent addition to the collection. The my favorite Joe of the four. Um, so yeah, let's move over to the other side and deal with some Cobras. Okay, figured we'd start with the big Kahuna himself, Cobra Commander, Cobra the Enemy, and of course we've got new artwork, and this is the variant logo i don't know remember exactly what lenny called it but they can't say mickey mouse it's mickey mouse it's mickey mouse cobra commander now the interesting thing is you will never confuse this for a legit mickey mouse because uh the legit 82 mickey mouse are straight arms and this guy is not a straight arm as you can see so you will never have to worry about confusing that with something vintage, which is a lot more than what this guy will probably likely ever sell for. But you never know. Like I said, there's now a there's only fifteen thousand of these in the world ish. So, anywho, great cardstock, great new design. Of course, we got the back file name classified, primary military speciality intelligence, secondary military speciality ordnance, experimental weaponry. Absolute power, total control of the world, yada, yada, yada. That is Cobra Commander himself. So let's get him off this card. And again, he doesn't have any extra accessories because they bubbled it in. So we don't have that extra piece at the top. So there we go. We set this file card off to the side. And we pull the evil Cobra Commander out, pop out the figure, pop out his accessory, which is in there very, very well. And we throw it off to the side. So, first things first, giving him the quick checkout. This is the same figure if you have gotten the Cobra Duke 2-pack retro figures. Exact same body, but in a classic color scheme to the original figure with the one stripe down one leg, none down the other. There are probably some fine details that they've added to it over time, but it looks it is a very good representation of the original. Um, it is not in the cartoon colors. It is meant to look as close to the original as possible. And I've got no issues with this. This is this is a this is a solid. So, I mean, let's check. Good articulation at the knees. Waist has a great o ring or great O ring. We've got our swivels. We've got our swivels. No issues there. And of course, Cobra Commander has his hair dryer gun accessory which I'm having a hard time getting to show up on camera of course we try to get it to show up and it just is not wanting to focus 
and I really want to show off the detail of it. So once again, I will pull out my handy dandy light so you can actually see it. So there you go. Much better. And of course, we've got Cobra Commander. I'll show him with the light on it. It's actually dark now. I've been doing this review <laughs> for a while, going through everything. So of course you have the 2022 Hasbro on it. But uh, let's see if it ports in there. I never remember if it goes this, it goes this way, Dodo, where the actual peg's at. So does it peg in? Perfect as I would expect. So there we have it, folks. Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander, and it looks wonderful. This by far is my favorite figure overall because of my love for Cobra Commander. Uh, but now it's nice to have one that I have a Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander, and if I uh, if I had him out, I would I would quickly show you just a quick comparison. Uh, if I remember, maybe I'll add a picture to the video. But it's 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 fortunate that people could have an opportunity to get this figure without having to own a true Mickey Mouse if they just wanted one because this is this is pretty much spot on. I mean, yeah, obviously there's some differences versus the original, but this is a good approximation. So excellent figure, good job Hasbro. Where the heck's my stands? That's all I can say about this one. So, Cobra Commander, wonderful job. And let's move on to the next figure. And okay, next is the Cobra Trooper, based uh, off the original figure from 1982. New card art, once again, comes with his uh, Dragonov, I believe it is. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. First thing I notice is the gun is bent in the plastic packaging, so that is annoying. But the figure looks pretty good. Don't have any solid complaints about it. Uh, I believe they've. Added, it looks a little more uh, cartoony. Um, again, I also have the the, the Cobra Pack uh, retro vintage, and those are supposed to be more cartoon inspired. But this one doesn't. I don't remember it looking like this, the original figure. I thought there was more black and less gray. Uh, specifically, I don't remember those. So, but yeah, maybe maybe I'm just misremembering. Mis but we flip it over. File name unknown, primary military specialty infantry, secondary military specialty sabotage, various countries. So these are Cobras as they call it here. Cobras will wear, and it's actually the Cobra Trooper. Because we've modern, we've they changed the name of it from Cobra to Cobra Trooper. But that being said, same thing. Weapons in here, nothing up here. Get this guy out of his packaging. Set this file card off. The, I, I every time, it, I mean, it's tearing that beautiful artwork. But man, it it for some reason it just tickles my my nostalgia button. Just the way it tears off, just like the old ones. So. Uh, you won't find me doing that with a vintage figure, I can tell you that. Um, not now. But six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old me for sure. So there's the figure. Stand him here for a minute. That head is tight. Uh, let's get this gun out. So again, I, I haven't mentioned a whole lot, but it's super with these new retro vintage figures, the uh it's very, very gummy. It's a different type of plastic. And I'm going to go ahead and throw the light on since that seems to be helping a lot. So we'll do it backwards this time. So but like I was saying, very gummy, but it's very easy to bend it back in place. Um, so there you go. There's the gun. Focus camera. Not that hard. Come on. There you go. So very nice. Of course, the main attraction is the Cobra Trooper. And like I said, I, I remember this being silver, and the, but the knee pad, ooh, those are some tight, knee, ooh, those knees are tight. So this guy is, is tight. The elbows are fine. Nothing wrong with the elbows. Move these knees. So we've got a almost 90 degree bend. Actually, that that's pretty much 90 degree bend. That one's, it's just, that's a tight knee. This one's tight too. But it does bend all the way, so that's good. Uh, if you remember, the Stinger driver had some notoriously bad knees that would only bend about 45 degrees before they got stuck. So I don't know if it's the same body or not, but this guy is good. There is, there's nothing wrong with this guy. Solid all around. Like I said earlier, the neck was a little tight. It's turning a lot better now, but great figure. Let's go ahead and put the gun in his hand. We'll make him right-handed as well. And 
do, 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 do. Oh, get in there. Oh, good. Solid. So, got our Cobra Trooper. Wouldn't mind a few more of these guys. But, stand him up here. Again, solid figure. The Cobra sets so far have been excellent. And I uh, just, I'm going to slide him back a little bit more. <laughs> was fall over. Hey, Hasbro, where are the stands? Where are they? <laughs> but yeah, this is another good one. I'm enjoying him. We got one more Cobra to go, so let's just get right to it. And that's going to be the Cobra Air Crew. And here we go. The final figure from the seven figure set, the Cobra Gra sorry, the Cobra Ground Crew, not Air Crew. Code name Ramp Rat. So that's cool. And uh, this was ultimately going to be the basis for the uh, ketchup and mustard figures. Uh, I believe they were going to use Failsafe's head on this body. But unfortunately, we did not get those. So we were, were left with the Ramp Rat, which is cool because he comes with a mortar and his little... I don't know what those are called. Somebody tell me in the comments what those are called. Directional wand things. <laughs> so yeah, same thing. Flip it over. We've got file names unknown. Sorry, get focus. Primary military specialty aircraft technician. Secondary military specialty weapons technician. So from various countries. Now I will read this one because it is quite a bit different as being a new card. I guess I didn't read a uh, fail safe, so I should have read his. Uh, each Ramp Rat member of the Cobra ground crew is responsible for refueling, maintaining, and marshalling Cobra arsenal of aircraft. They are also outfit the vehicles with their full ordnance while Ramp Rats don't serve on the front lines. Working with, working as a member of the Cobra ground crew can be just as dangerous with deadly consequences for poor job performance. You don't want to be you don't want to be the Ramp Rat who has to explain to Wild Weasel why his missile didn't detonate on impact. You'll wind up with the under the ground crew. <laughs> So that's fun. That's a fun little uh, card back to do. And of course, you got the cross cell. So, like I said, we are we are. Oh, that's not that was not glued on very well. At least, yeah, that was not glued on near as well as the others. Um, so yeah, Ramp Rat. That's a fun code name. So good job for Hasbro. Whoever had on the marketing team did that. If it was Emily, good job, Emily. Uh, that's a fun name. So we're getting out his accessories, his little wands. He's also got. Includes a uh, mortar, which is an interesting choice for a... That's a very interesting choice. For someone that's going to be on a on an aircraft carrier or on a runway to have a mortar. I mean, you just I just guess you would have figured you'd have a, a sidearm. So, a uh, quick look at this guy. And it looks like we are mostly, if not completely, a reuse of Ripcord, actually. So I'm looking at Ripcord real quick. Uh, just to see if it is indeed the same body on the torso. Because the, the vest was throwing me, but I think it is the same one. Uh, well, maybe not. I don't think it is. I think the the arms and the legs... Well, let's just look. I've got him right here. Same legs? Same lower legs. But different thighs, it looks like. Oh, yes. Different thighs for sure. Same midsection. Different uh, top, same arms. So, like I said, this, this top piece was going to actually be ketchup and mustards. But then we've got the ripcord legs, arms, uh, and lower body. Sorry, not legs. The legs actually belong to... The legs belong to, and he said it is failsafes. So, but failsafe has a different torso. So he's a combination of the ripcord and failsafe bodies with the Cobra Trooper head. So otherwise, nothing too different. Everything's turning. Everything seems fine. And of course, he has his accessories. Oh, I guess I should check the head. Head turns fine. Set him back there. And just so we can see him again, I'll turn on my light. And he comes with his little, these are very small, these little neon green wand accessories. So you can do the, that number. You have two of those. 
So let's just pop both of those in his hand real quick. And they just pop right in. Nothing fancy. Of course, you can, you know, make him doing his, you know, yeah, you just heard me make sound effects. So yeah, he has that and looks wonderful. I will set him back down there for a moment. So you can see him back there. And then, of course, he comes with this guy, which I said is, is interesting. This also came with the Retro Cobra Trooper Officer 2-pack, I believe. And like I said, it, it, it's fun. Nothing much to it. It's just a standard uh, mortar. But uh, again, Hasbro's where, Hasbro, where are the stands? I don't understand. You know what? I guess I shouldn't be, I should, should have checked them all, but they do have holes, so they will stand on vintage stands. But, uh, so yeah, we have went through all seven figures. Which one is your favorite? I'm curious. Drop me a comment. Uh, we'll do a couple of comparisons real quick to, to some other figures so you can get, a, get kind of an idea. We'll compare the Cobra Commanders. We'll compare. We'll put a whole lineup. We'll grab some other retro vintage figures. And we'll just play around with it for a little bit. And then I'll give you an overall review before we move back to the Sky Striker and Final Thoughts. So, all right, let's move forward. Okay, so here we have the lineup of all the figures uh, together. So you can have a quick uh, overview of them. I figured I'd just rank them one through seven. This is my personal rankings. Yours can differ. If you have the set, please drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think are uh, your top seven in order. So, like I said, looking these all uh, these figures over one more time, number one is definitely going to be Cobra Commander for me, strictly because he's a knockout of the park. He looks just like the original, other than having the swivel arms. And just for a quick comparison, let me, let me do this, throw on my little light one more time, and hit the light. So you can see what a uh, new Cobra Commander looks like stacked up against an original Mickey Mouse. So there you go. That's your difference. This one's a different shade of blue, uh, a little more of a rounded face, not much. Looks like they just softened the edges a little. Um, they definitely fixed that belt and redid it, made it a little larger. Um, but yeah, you're, the big difference is going to be, besides the rivets, it's going to be the the straight arm versus swivel arm. You're never going to find, you're never going to be able to confuse these two. But uh, there's just a quick review of the difference between the new Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander and the classics Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander. So there's number one on my list. Moving forward to number two, as I try to get this to focus back, number two is going to be Ripcord by far. Ripcord is fantastic. Great new figure. I love Night Force, so I love Night Force Ripcord. Uh, just <clears throat> excuse me, fits the th the theme of Night Force. Love it. Love the 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 tampo on the side of the Night Force logo. Wonderful. Uh, no issues there. Slight miss because of the the super gummy accessories, but that's okay. Otherwise, everything else is good. Number three, Failsafe. Failsafe is awesome. Great new character, once again, deserving to be in the G.I. Joe mythos. Ace's co-pilot, wonderful figure. The, the, the basic green and brown, tan, gray, works great for that vintage early OG-13 feel. <clears throat> feel. And I love it. I love that he just comes with a simple sidearm. Perfect figure, A+. Uh, but yeah, he's my number three. But I think, that, I think they knocked him out of the park completely for being a completely new figure. Um, <clears throat> number four is the Cobra Trooper. And I know I finally figured out what the issue was with him. And that was whenever I pulled out the retro Cobra Trooper, <laughs> who is actually the, the, the non, non Sunbow colors. <laughs> that was what my issue was. This is Sunbow colored. This is like the original. So that's, that's what was throwing me out. Obviously they're exactly the same other than this one has more grays and that the open white hands versus blue. So that's what was throwing me. But otherwise, great figure, another great troop builder to have. Smart of Hasbro to throw that guy in. 
no issues with him. Um, so yeah, he is my number, my number four on the list. Number five, of course, is going to be, uh, the Cobra, uh, uh, ramp rat. Jeez. Say that three times fast. So once again, the ramp rat is fantastic. I'm just going to forever have him doing this, whether there's an aircraft or not, (laughs) you know, he's just, this is just a fun figure. This is a great one. It does make me sad that we didn't get ketchup and mustard because I would have loved to have more of these bodies, but Definitely a cool new character. Wonderful to have to the line. And yeah, stoked to have him. Great great reuse of parts to make a new character. If I can get him to stand back up. And I'm... You know, Hasbro, I only said it about a dozen times where the stands. Oh my gracious. Mark Callison, come on, buddy. Yeah, I just said my full name. If you didn't know who I was. So... There he is. Uh, number six, uh, if you didn't already figure it out, is going to be Ace. And Ace is... There's nothing wrong with Ace. Uh, he is exactly like I expect him to be. <laughs> I am just... The spacesuit's never done a lot for me. It's great. It's a, it's a great figure. There's nothing wrong with it. Literally, it's it's exactly as it should be comparable to the original. I just have never been a big fan of the Space Suit Ace, so that's why he's number six. Otherwise, number seven, like I said, I am all sorts of sad about this Scarlet. Um, I'm sad that the hair is not red. I am sad that she doesn't have a sidearm. I'm sad that her crossbow does not have a grip. And that's what that's what does it in, just... So many misses on this one. I, I, when I first saw it, I was like, man, this figure's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, what a unique idea. Scarlet flies a lot of the Sky Strikers in the cartoon, and that's great reuse of Ace's body. And you, they just, sorry, Hasbro, you, you bumbled this. Also, I forgot to mention on Ace, but the, the whole elbow right here not being together on the figures, seeing how it's the exact same on this Scarlet. And that ace being the same body, I'm very, I'm feeling like this is going to be a thing on all the figures. Maybe not. Maybe I just got unlucky and got two in a row. But it really looks like they didn't, they didn't clamp that down properly when they assembled it. So Scarlet comes in last. But again, I am glad to have this set. There is nothing wrong with this set. Overall, I am happy to have them. I am glad that I get retro figures, period. But let's go ahead and move on to uh, Sky Striker with uh, Failsafe and Ace in it. We'll do a little playing around with that, and then I'll, I'll switch back to me and we'll do some final thoughts. Okay, so I wanted to get just some final thoughts on... Uh, getting the figures in the cockpit, letting you see what it's all about. This actually does come off separately, so I pulled that off just so it'd make it a little easier to get things in and out. So let me start with Failsafe as the rear pilot. You just pop these seats out, and of course, we can just take the figure, match up the O-ring, and I guess I should show you what I'm doing a little more on the camera. I am having a really hard time getting this in here because it shouldn't be that difficult and yet it seems to be. Again, I'm trying to do this through looking at the camera instead of actually just looking at the figure. And wow, that is that is a tight fit on his on his backside. So we can get the figure in there. Now the real question is, is will he, will he fit back in here? That is the real question. So I have to stand up actually to look down in there because it does not look like he wants to sit in there. That's going to be very problematic if I cannot get this figure who is supposed to be in here to actually sit back. So again, those feet are going to go way too far up. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to get him to. Wow, this this could be, this could be sad. So 
The issue I'm having here is the following. The back peg does not really seem to want to go in there all the way. And so, as you can see, I'm, I'm pressing very hard. Actually, I'm pushing hard enough that it's, it's pushing this back in. Okay, so now, there he is. I'm going to leave him out for a minute. We're going to try putting Ace, Ace in as well. And I'm hoping that Ace is easier to fit in. Because, man, they are tight. Okay, Ace went in a lot easier. So we're going to put Ace in the front. There is also a joystick for flying the plane that goes between his legs. I didn't realize that till just now. And you can move it. That's cool. So let's bend Ace's legs a little bit up. Try to get him to fit in there as he should. Okay, Ace is in there. Wonderful. Ace is in place. Fail safe, my man. It's your turn. His legs go underneath the seat. I think that's my problem. So, I dropped a missile. That's great. There we go. Nobody said it was going to be easy doing this on camera. Uh, Ace is having a lot of issues getting snapped down in that seat. But that being said, they are both in there. So let's put Failsafe's helmet on. Let's snap this into place. Oh man, this is not going to... This is not working out well, very well. So right now, the reason it's not working out well is Failsafe's legs are in the way of the peg for the... Oh, dear Moses, come on. There we go. Uh, his feet are in the way of the peg. I'll try to show you. As you can see, it's just kind of right in the way. So I'm trying to figure out how to bend these legs up a little more so that he can give clearance for Ace's body. Maybe if I split the legs out a little further. No, that's not going to work either. Really looks like they have to sit like that. That's unfortunate. And again, if, I, if you play with it a little bit, maybe you can make it work. I don't like it myself. Matter of fact, no. You guys want to see it. And I'm not going to say I'm a shill for Hasbro. If they didn't design this right, they need to be called out on it. So, start over again real quick. There's a or fail safe. We're going to try to push his legs up a little higher. Just a little more of a bend to him. We're going to try to put him back down in the seat. Again, this... This peg not going all the way in there is, I know it might not seem like much, but that little extra bit of space would be very helpful right now. So let's try putting an ace first because we know aces has to go right there. Great. And we know fail safe has to go in here and we need his legs to move just a little bit. So maybe I'm just doing it wrong. There's always that possibility. But when I try to get failsafe in there, he's just not lining up with that peg. And it feels just darn close. So close. Again, I'm really wanting that back peg to go. Oh, there we go. I got it to move all the way back in. Now, hopefully, that will, that will resolve my issue. That extra bit of clearance. No, still not quite there, damn it. Sorry. Just overly frustrated that I cannot get a toy 
in place that I feel like I should be able to do given the price we paid for it, right? Is like his O-ring is so tight also that I can't even make him do a silly like it's like, hey, stick your feet up really high or something stupid, right? Because he just keeps Oh gracious Moses, that is supremely challenging. Oh, oh I thought I got it. Supremely challenging. I know they said bend his legs when I was watching the video. Got it. Snapped right in finally. Woo! Let me tell you. I don't know. Maybe maybe one of you watching in the future sent something back to the past and that's what made this work. I don't know. <laughs> but that was that was fun. So this just clips back in. Now that's fantastic once you get them in there. Now I have to decide if I'm ever going to get them out. So yeah, there we go. We uh, And then of course you can do this. And uh, I would show you Scarlet, but honestly, if it's, it's the same figure in the front, now I would assume since they're the same size, I could put Scarlet in the back in place of Failsafe or vice versa, put Ace in the back. The scarlet in the front and it would still work but you know i'm not gonna do it because i just had a heck of a, time, heck of a time getting them in there now so just as a final follow-up because i like i said i've i've been recording this over the last couple of days um it's cool because we can literally have other figures come in and we can show off what they look like with the other accessories so of course that's there and then we have the cart which I'm bringing in now so you can see just kind of how that looks and of course the cart can pull this that's cool and we also have the ladder which I feel like I should probably hooked onto the cockpit or right here so you can see it um one thing i didn't show earlier in the video it's worth mentioning uh i can't remember if i showed this this is actually a a plug for fuel and uh, if i zoom in a little bit maybe you can see the the outline um and on the other side there's a whole bunch of hidden panels on the opposite side well you know what i should just show you so first uh let me move her out of the way and i'll show you really quick i don't know if i'll be able to get one of the panels off, but I can definitely show you them at least. So let me roll the Sky Striker this way. Let me readdress my camera one more time. And I apologize for the sudden shaking, but I will, I'll make it worth your while. So if we look right here, um, all these are separate panels that you can actually pull off and reveal parts of the plane. Now they did not mention this in the instructions. Oh come on. There you go. And as you can see there's just extra little detail in there. So if you want to have somebody working on the plane you can definitely do that. It's very cool. It lines up very well with a figure not saying you have to have Scarlet working on it, but just for example, I mean, it's right there. Looks wonderful. Obviously, on a real F-14, there would be a lot greater height, and you wouldn't be standing right beside it. But you know, we're going to suspend. We're going to suspend uh, our beliefs here temporarily, at least. And like I mentioned, we also have this cool ladder, which can attach somewhere. And my first thought was, oh, I thought it was supposed to attach up here, so the so they could get on the plane but it actually looks not bad there i don't know if that's what it's meant for but it looks good um if you know anything about the f-14 if you're an expert tell me where that silly ladder should go because on the uh on on the blueprints they just show it attached to this piece of the cart like that um but i'm sure there's more to it so yeah there we go we have ace and failsafe Scarlet, 
the F-14 Tomcat. And yeah, I'm going to flip back around, do some final thoughts, and uh, we'll wrap this up. So it's been great going through this experience. It's actually very late at night right now. Um, what do I think of this set overall? I'm glad I got it. I think the Sky Striker itself is fantastic. Um, I have a lot of questions about the figures. And the more I think about it, and the more I'm going to think about it after this video, and the more I'm going to talk with uh, other collectors and friends, colleagues, to get their thoughts on the issue, the more I... I there's just some glaring misses that, that are going to bother me. Scarlet's going to bother me a lot. Because... I, I don't understand, I, and, I, and I have her right, right here, just in front of me. I, there's just, I, I, it, there's a lot of misses on that. And then it's, it's translated over. The, the lack of stands really bothers me. They did such a great job of mirroring the, the aesthetic of the card art, of the, the card material, the, the file cards. They did such a great job on all that, and then to just miss something like stands. I mean, Hasbro, I, I know I've harped on this so much, and I'm sorry that you have to keep listening to it. But if you're going to put, I mean, for example, if I reach under here, underneath my, my desk, I have tons of extra figures just in here. Hasbro, you included stands with these guys. Every retro figure you did... There are stands in here. Actually, there might be in the package. You know what? Just just for grins and giggles, because I don't remember. Let's let's just look. Let's just look, because I don't remember. I don't remember how these things were. I was gonna open these eventually anyway. Um So, if I just pull these guys out real quick. I know they have the cruddy card. So there are no stands in here. Maybe that's why. But there are stands in here. How difficult would it have been to put a stand inside the card? That's my question. Um, again, I, I big miss. No grip on Scarlet's bow. Super big miss. Someone should be canned over that. Okay, maybe that's not. Maybe that's me being a little crazy. It is very late at night right now. I've I've done this video for a while, um, but that's a huge miss. It's a huge miss. Um, but. At the same time, I mean, you gave us great figures. Again, Ripcord's fantastic. Cobra Commander is fantastic. All the Cobras are fantastic. Um, I really can't nitpick them. It's just kind of on the Joe side. Just, you know, you kind of... Some things got messed up. Um, the Sky Striker makes up for it. With all the options for different stickers, different configurations in flight with the stand. The stand's amazing. That is a one... Whoever engineered the stand, it, it's great. That stand back there, that the uh, the arcade machine you see back there, it's, it's at an angle. And that stand is just sitting on top of it at an angle with a plane turned the other way. I don't know if it's counterbalancing itself just perfectly or what, but it's not moving. It's fantastic where it's at. I told my wife, I said, I'm probably just going to leave it there. She's like, well, it's sitting on an angle. It's going to slide. Something's going to happen. I'm like, it's not. It's, it's staying up there, and that is fantastic. And I love that you can just turn it and put it straight up or nearly straight up, bank it down. That stand is wonderful. The storage on it is wonderful. Uh, the extra accessories are great just because of what they are. Nothing, nothing exciting, but nothing boring. They could have just certainly not given it to us as well. So I'm glad that they used that. If you have a flag, they will look wonderful on your flag. Something I didn't show, uh, maybe I can show it real quick, is that the, the box itself that the figures come in and the extra pieces come in, uh, there's two of them, and I'm going to dump this all over me trying to show it, but it's actually a runway. You get two of these, so you can actually set your Sky Striker on top of it. So for the designing, even of the packaging, very smart. Everything about the package was smart, very well thought out. Yes, some of the cards had creases in them, but they, I mean, like I showed earlier, they did try. It's not that they didn't. They put paper over them. They put them in these. Um, I've seen people complaining. If you're, if you're wanting to have a set for mint on card and you open up, I can understand being disappointed. 
But I mean, you got to realize it's a, it's a human being just shoving these things in boxes. And if, you know, it doesn't take a heck of a lot for somebody that's doing this 10 hours a day, every day, just to, oops, whatever, get them in and keep going. They've got a quota to make just like everybody else probably. So, I mean, even that I understand, but it's kind of a miss because I'm sure if this would be an interesting thing, if anybody actually in the comments has that issue and is able to get Hasbro to send you new carded figures that aren't damaged, that'd be really cool. So if, you, if you're one of those people who want to take that on or you have taken that on, please uh, drop a comment. But as for the rest of it, um, it's been fun. I looked forward to these. I'm glad I did the purchase. Um, if I was buying these after the market, like after market, for aftermarket cost, I would I would have to sit and think for a minute if I really wanted it. Um, if I wanted truly unique figures, um, you might go the route of just purchasing a couple of one-offs, but you are going to pay a premium. I, I would almost guarantee, I haven't even looked, but I would guarantee that Failsafe and uh, Night Force Ripcord are probably the most premium ones, followed by the Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander, just because that's the only way you're going to get them. Scarlet's probably going to be a dead last. You might be able to get a good deal on her. Um, the Cobra Troopers, you know, you're not really getting anything different with the Cobra Trooper here because it's the cartoon version that you couldn't have already gotten with the retro two-pack earlier that I just showed you a minute ago when I opened it up. Uh, Ramp Rat is a, is a fantastic figure. He's a fun figure, but he's not one of those ones you're going to need for your collection unless you just have a cool diorama and you want uh, your Rattler to have somebody, you know, motioning it in <laughs> but yeah i'm glad i did it i'm glad i've got five of them i'm glad i got one for my buddy i'm glad that i've got one to keep mint i'm glad i've got one to open up and display the card and figures around the uh sky striker box but yeah i'm glad to have done this video i'm glad that you guys are able to enjoy this video please leave a like if you enjoyed it uh if you have any comments i always read all the comments i try to respond back the best i can um, let me know what you think. I enjoyed making this. Of course, I've got more videos coming throughout the week and we're going to see where GI Joe takes us in 2023. I'm looking forward to another HasLab. If they're willing to do another retro HasLab, I would be all on board for another one. If this is a one and done deal and this is the end of retro, then I'm cool with that too, because I've had a lot of fun with it. I hope you had a lot of fun. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will talk to you all soon.